Welcome to Poland Daily History with me, Nicholas Richardson. And in this series of episodes, we've been looking at the great uprisings of 19th century Poland, the January Uprising and the November Uprising. And I'm delighted to have with me in the studio my colleague Adam Starzynski, our expert on all things historical and Polish, to take the story further. Adam, welcome back. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. And I think by 1864, in the early part of 1864, the November uprising had sort of begun to peter out. Yes, uh, we discussed uh, the uprising in some of the earlier episodes. And in 1863, uh, things were looking bleak over the summer. But after the summer, uh, the uprising had been taken over by a new leader, Romald Traugut. Um, who had uh, more military experience, he was a better organizer, and he started turning things around, making it look, uh, look more positive again. Uh, but in 1864, after a winter that was uh, quite calm, there wasn't much fighting going on, uh, everybody were saving up their energy for uh, the spring campaign to start. Um, but by, uh, by February, it started looking worse and worse. Um, in the Świętokrzyskie um, area, a mountainous region in, in southern Poland, uh, a region which traditionally has been uh, somewhat of a stronghold for Polish insurgencies uh, thanks to the uh, mountainous terrain. Uh, after uh, the Second World War, uh, Jan Piwnik, uh, uh, also known as Ponury with its nom de guerre, uh, wreaked havoc over there, uh, first against the, the, German, the Germans and uh, later after the war also against the uh, communists and, and their Polish marionettes. Um, in this area, uh, General Józef Hauke Bosak uh, had been conducting a very successful campaign. Uh, but unfortunately, um, on uh, February 21st, he suffered a, a major defeat, uh, which uh, sent his unit into swift decline, and, and soon they were gone. Uh, they had been uh, one of the main fighting forces uh, that, that was uh, still uh, keep keeping the struggle alive, uh, so their departure was uh, was certainly uh, bad news for the Poles. Uh, later on, uh, in um, in late February, uh, the Austrians that had earlier supported the uprising uh, declared um, martial law. Uh, they had been uh, disillusioned by by the uprising. Uh, they had initially thought that it would be more of a uh, social uprising, so to say, uh, against um, uh, the working conditions uh, the, that the peasantry would rise up against uh, the Russians. But now that they started sensing that this was more of a national uprising with uh, nationalist uh, overtones, uh, they started fearing that this could spread uh, to the part of Austria, uh, Galicia, Krakow, uh, areas that were under the control of, um, uh, of the Austrian Empire. Um, and they, they didn't want this revolutionary nationalist fervor to spread there. So they ended all their support for the uprising and started uh, cracking down on uh, uh, the Polish organizations that had been working uh, on the Austrian side of the border, supporting their fellow Poles uh, on the Russian side. Uh, so with that uh, help uh, greatly diminished, uh, the insurgents in, in uh, Russian-controlled Poland uh, couldn't count on, on the help that they earlier had had. Uh, then on March 2nd, uh, the Russians finally uh, enforced uh, the uh, abolition of, uh, of serfdom uh, for the peasantry. Um, this was uh, a main driving force for many of the peasants that had joined the ranks, even though they didn't make up um, the majority of, of the fighters. It was still the, the landed gentry that, that was in majority. Um, it was a severe blow uh, to the uprising, uh, especially as uh, Romal Traugut had put his uh, strategy into transforming uh, the uprising into a larger scale uh, movement, ma mainly fueled by uh, the peasantry, who he had himself uh, promised and started allotting uh, land to uh, through uh, land reform. Um, but uh, with the Russians now uh, outbidding him, so to say, as they were able to uh, enforce this uh, abolishment of, uh, of serfdom on a larger scale, uh, that um, driving force also disappeared. And then finally, in, in April, um, it really came to an end, uh, at least uh, in, in any major way, so to say. There was, there was still some resistance that would take place for another year or so, but uh, a large-scale fighting ended in, in April. 
um, Traugut himself was captured on uh, on the night between uh, April 10th and April uh, 11th. Uh, he had been um, renting an apartment here in Warsaw on Smolna Street, uh, where he was uh, hiding under a secret identity. He had uh, claimed that he was a, a merchant that had arrived from Galicia. Uh, but in the end, the, the Russians had found out uh, who they were dealing with, uh, who was the national leader of the uprising, and uh, they put him in shackles. Adam, as usual, the clock has defeated us. I'm going to have to stop you there, but we will pick up the story next time. There we are. I've had to interrupt Adam almost in mid-sentence, but don't worry. If you join us next time on Poland Daily History, as we hope you will, we'll pick up the story. Thank you for watching and see you next time.